Dimensional analysis is a method of tracking units as a way to approach mathematical or scientific problem solving. Uh, the method relies on conversion factors, uh, which are just ratios of units, that can be used to convert one unit to a different unit. And generally, what that means is you have a given unit, which represents the units from whatever data you're working with, and then you multiply that by a conversion factor. And what you do is you set your conversion factor as a ratio, desired unit over given unit. So this can be something like grams per milliliter or uh, grams per mole or whatever. And what you can do is, depending on which units you have and which units you need, you can take the ratio and you can leave it as is or you can invert it. So if you have something that weighs one gram per milliliter, what this really means is it weighs one gram for every one milliliter. And you could just as easily write that and say that solution, if you have one milliliter, it weighs one gram. Each of these statements is equivalent and you can flip the ratio as required. Dimensional analysis is a way of tracking units and what you can do is you can cancel units and end up with your desired unit. As an example what we can do is we can convert minutes into hours. So let's say you measure 12 and a half minutes. What you want is hours and what you have is minutes. So you set up a ratio where you have your desired unit on top. You want hours. One hour contains 60 minutes and what you can do is you can cancel the minutes and you're left with hours. Doing this calculation gives you 0 0.2083 repeating hours and your 12 and a half minutes is a measured value with three significant figures. You're multiplying it by a 1 and a 60. Those are exact values. It's an exact defined conversion. So your final answer has to have three significant figures. So 0 0.208 hours. And you can also use this same method in larger, more complicated calculations. So what we can do is we can think about an example where we want to convert a mass to a volume. So imagine that you have uh, a solution that weighs 17 and a half grams and has a density of 1.2 grams per milliliter. And we ask, what is the volume in liters? What we can do is we can use our dimensional analysis process. So we have data. Our data is grams. And we want to end up with liters, but we don't have a conversion in liters. We have a conversion from grams to milliliters, so let's do that. Milliliters are a unit of volume. We can get grams into milliliters. So we can say desired unit on top, given unit on bottom, grams cancel, and we're left with milliliters. And you either know or can find the conversion between milliliters and liters. So we have milliliters as their starting unit. We want to end up with liters and our given unit is milliliters, we do a cancellation and we're left with liters. So this is our process. We start with 17.50 grams, multiply it by one milliliter for every 1.2 grams from our density, grams cancel, and we are left with 14.583 repeating milliliters. And we can convert that into liters. There's one liter for every 1,000 milliliters. Our milliliters cancel, and we're left with 0 0.014583 repeating liters. Again, we have to track, uh, check our significant figures. We started with four sig figs. We did a conversion with 1.2. 
which has two significant figures. Densities are measured values, so we have to take that into account. So we're doing a division with four sig figs and two sig figs, so we end up with two, which means this should have two sig figs. So this one should have two sig figs. And then we are using an absolute defined conversion. There are exactly 1,000 milliliters in a liter, so it doesn't have any effect on our significant figures. So our final answer should have two sig figs. So we can say it's 0 0.015 liters.